story of the landing site of the Churong rover starts billions of years ago on the other side of the planet. And I'll introduce a very colorful version of Mars to tell that story. This is a topographic map with shades of red showing higher terrain and shades of blue showing lower terrain. We're looking at a place on Mars where billions of years ago, huge catastrophic outflows of what most likely was water carved channels from the highlands to the lowlands. If enough water flowed into the lowlands, it may have reached one of the biggest basins on Mars known as Utopia Planitia. It's the presence of that ancient water that may now be recorded in the landscape that Churong is exploring. Among the many impact craters are irregular fractures and small mounds with a pit on top known as pitted cones. They could be volcanic spatter cones, but there's growing evidence that they are mud volcanoes similar to ones on Earth like these two in Azerbaijan. If catastrophic floods delivered water and mud to Utopia Planitia, it would have iced over fairly quickly in the cold climate of Mars. Then the ice would slowly sublime, converting from a solid form to a vapor form in the thin Martian atmosphere, leaving behind a lag deposit of rocks and dirt. As the ice thickened and expanded over time, fractures could have formed both at the surface and within the ice. Any remaining liquid water and mud could rise up through the fractures to the surface like lava, forming mud flows and mud volcanoes. Now we'll fast forward billions of years to Churong Landing Day on May 14. These views show the parachute deploying to slow the lander, then separating along with the back shell in this upward looking view toward the sun. A camera pointing down captures the final descent, ending in a swirl of debris. The rover unfolded its solar panels and took its first panorama. Here you can see one of the two streaks made not from the descent rocket, but from the venting of the remaining fuel on board. You can also see the parachute and back shell. There's another streak on the opposite side and a ramp for the rover to drive down from the lander. Here are shots taken during the drive down the ramp, and if you listen carefully, you'll hear audio recorded by a microphone on the rover. The strange sounds are from the motors and from the wheels as they roll on the ramp. The rover drove several meters away from the lander and dropped off a wireless camera that recorded this incredible video of the rover returning to the lander. This was the setup for a fantastic family portrait. I'll put in a Chinese astronaut for a sense of scale. The rover's eyes are about the same height as a human's. Churong then turned back toward the lander and took this beautiful shot, which includes the Chinese flag that was unfurled for the occasion. China is only the second country to operate a rover on Mars, and they did it on the first try. This is a spectacular accomplishment. Zooming in below the lander, you can see the hole that was excavated by the powerful descent rocket. And zooming in on the horizon, you can see the flat-topped hill that is the closest pitted cone, a possible mud volcano about six kilometers or about three and a half miles away. The view captured from the orbiting Tianwen-1 spacecraft, which delivered Jurong to Mars, shows the jettisoned heat shield, parachute and back shell, and the lander and rover. NASA's high-rise camera on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter provided a color view of the scene. The context camera on that orbiter helps to show the significant distance that Jurong would have to drive to reach the possible mud volcano. It may seem close, but the rover may not live long enough to cover that distance. But it's possible that the rocks closer to home formed from mud flows. This would help finally prove whether the lowlands of Mars ever held 
an ocean of water. On June 11, High Rise caught Jurong already making tracks across the landscape, having traveled about 70 meters from the lander. It was on its way to a small crater about six meters across, where it stopped to look back at its tracks, which curve around some bigger rocks. It looked back at the distant lander and then at the large boulders thrown out of the crater, with the possible mud volcano looming on the horizon. Panning around to the southwest, Jurong caught its jettisoned back shell glinting in the late afternoon sunlight.